Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to continue with our shop GUI by fixing some of the bugs in the script. The main bug that we need to fix is whenever one player touches the shop part, it opens up the menu for all the players. So let me go ahead and show you what it's doing right now. So whenever that one player touches the shop, it opens it up for every player in the game. So that'll be the main thing we fix in this video, and we'll also take a look at some other things to try to make this a little bit better. Let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. Alright, so before we get started, I just want to let you know that all the scripts that I'm going to be showing you in this video will be linked in the description so that you can just copy and paste it into your game. Alright, so the way we're going to fix the issue of the menu popping up on everybody's screen is by using remote events. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a separate script on the server side that looks for a touch event. And then it's going to send a remote event to whatever player touched it to only open up the menu for that particular player. So to do that, what we're going to do first is under replicated storage, make sure you add a remote event. And after that, we're going to go under the server script service. And I have two different scripts here. The player setup is the script that we wrote before that handles the leader stats and also buying the tool. We're not going to change anything for this one, so don't worry about that. What you need to do under server script service is add a new script. I named this one shop menu, but you can name it whatever you want to. The name of it doesn't matter. So this is where we're going to handle the remote event, and this is where we're looking for that touch event to send a remote event to the client. To do that, we're going to reference the part in front of the shop, and just to remind you guys, that's this brown part right here. So whatever you named it over here in the Explore menu is what you'll need to put right here. After that, we're going to reference the replicated storage and also the remote event. We're also going to define a variable for players and use the player service. Then down here at the bottom, what we're doing is we're starting with the part reference, which we created up top here. Then we're saying when this part is touched, we're going to connect this function right here. And inside this function right here, the first thing we're doing is we're checking to make sure that the other object that touches the part is a humanoid. If it is a humanoid, then what we're going to do is we're going to find the player's name. And we're doing that by saying otherpart.parent.name. So other part right here is whatever other object touches this part right here. So if the player walks up to the shop, then the part that would touch this part right here would likely be like their foot or their leg. So other part would be that foot or the leg. And then by saying dot parent, we're going to get the whole player itself. And then we're going to reference their name part and look for that in players. Then if we're able to find the player, then we're going to trigger that remote event for the particular player. All right, so that handles the server side part of it. So on the server, it's looking for a player to touch the part in front of the shop, which is this one right here. When it sees that a player touches that part, then it's going to trigger a remote event for whatever player touched the part. Then on the local script, which we have under the frame, there's just a few things we have to change for this. Down here at the bottom, we're going to delete the old touch event that triggered the shop menu. And instead, we're going to say remote event dot on client event colon connect and then shop menu. So what this is doing, it's waiting for the server to trigger that remote event. And then whenever it receives that remote event, then it's going to run the shop menu. Up here under the shop menu, we're going to update a few things. First, we're going to start by saying local player is equal to game.players.localplayer. So this will get the current local player. And then we're going to say player.character.humanoid.walkspeed. And we're going to set that equal to zero so that the player can't move when the shop menu is open. And this is the part that's different than what we did before. Before, what we did is we said frame.visible equals true. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to take player, which is the current local player. We're going to access their player GUI, which is the particular player's GUI. We're going to go under the screen GUI and then reference the frame. And then we're going to set its visibility equal to true. Next, we're going to take a look at the close shop function. So this starts off the same way with a local player. The next part is going to set their walk speed back to normal so that they can walk around once the menu is closed. We're going to close the frame by setting it equal to false. And this part right here is new, and this is optional if you want to add this or not. But what I did is I added an invisible part in front of the shop here. And then what I did is whenever the player closes the shop, I teleport them to the position of this part right here. I do that by starting with the player, and then going to their character, and then the humanoid root part. And then we're going to be changing their C-frame, which is their position in the game. And we're going to be setting that equal to a new C-frame. And this off part right here I defined up top here. And this is equal to game.workspace dot the name of the part. So if we look over here in the Explorer menu, the invisible part, I named it off. So down here in the local script, I just said game.workspace dot off. 
Okay, so what I'm doing for this new C frame is I'm keeping the same X position. I'm adding a little bit to the Y position so that the player doesn't spawn inside the part. And then I'm keeping the same Z position. Like I said, this part is optional. I think it just makes things a little bit cleaner though. Okay, and before we end with this video, I just want to show you how things look. So what I'm going to do is have one player go up to the shop. And we can see that it just appears on that player's menu. And then if I have the other player go up to the shop, then the shop just appears on their menu. And we can see when I press the X button, it teleports them back a little bit away from the shop. All right, so that's going to wrap things up for this video. And like I said before, I'm going to have all the scripts that I showed you in this video linked in the description so that you can either just copy and paste the whole thing if you want to or just copy the parts that have changed. If you have any questions about how the new scripts work, you can leave that in the comments. Also in the comments, if you want to, you can leave some suggestions of what else you want to do with the shop GUI, and I'll try to take a look at those. Alright, so this is going to end with this video. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.